everyone, my name's Annette, and you might know me on social media as Netters Plays. Well, today I'm going to talk to you about Odin's Ravens. It's a two-player only game. It's by Thorsten Gimler, and it says on the box it should play between 20 and 30 minutes. So I'll show you how to play the game, and then I'll also show you uh, my final thoughts at the end of the video. So um, let's get to it. Alright, so let me give you a brief overview of what the theme is supposed to be about this game. Uh, so Odin has these two birds. What he is, is he's an all-father god in Norse mythology, and he has these two ravens that he sends across the land of Midgard, which is like Earth. And so he sets these two ravens off to go across the different landscapes and kind of just come back with any news about, you know, what's going on in the world. So um, these ravens took it upon themselves to kind of make a race out of it. So they would head off in different directions, and then they would meet back with Odin. Whoever arrived there first would win. Now along the, the path, they would also seek help from Loki. He's another god, but he's the god of trickery and mischief. And so what he does is he kind of helps one, uh, one raven, or he will go ahead and hinder the other raven. And so it kind of plays on that backstory of a racing game, and also there's tricks and, and kind of uh, card play with, with the way that the landscape is set out. So I'll go ahead and show you how to play this game. Let me show you how to set up the game. So here you're going to grab your land cards. And what you're going to do is you're going to set 16 of them between you and the other player. So you'll set them down like that. And what you're going to look at is make sure that the ones that are together aren't the same. So you can see they're not the same, but here you can see that they are the same. So what you're going to do is just rotate it 180 degrees and then they're not the same anymore. So you just continue. If you find that you do rotate it and it's still the same, then you just put it to the bottom of the deck and then you just pull out the next card. And you continue on until there are 16 cards all the way through. Once you do the 16 cards, you're going to grab your wooden ravens and put one on each side. So you'll put one here and you'll put one there. And then what you'll do is each raven throughout the game is going to move forward and then they're going to move back. So they'll, it'll end up where the other raven is at and the other raven is going to go ahead and try to do the same too. So each player is going to grab their own deck of cards which is going to consist of the land cards and also the Loki cards. So you shuffle each deck individually and you place them in front of you and then you'll decide which pile you're going to draw from. The first thing you're going to do is draw five cards and you could draw from this pile or this pile, however way you choose, one at a time. So I'll draw this one and this one and then I'll decide to draw from that one as long as you end up with five cards in hand. And there you go, you're ready to start the game. So now that you have your five cards in hand, you can go ahead and play the game. So let me show you how. What you can do is you can play as many cards as you want from your hand. And you can stop or pass whenever you want to. So the way to play this is you're going to play your flight card or your Loki card and you're going to try to match the land cards here. If you match a land card, for example, this one matches that, you can move your raven forward. If you have, say for example, another matching one, you can move it again. I don't have this card, but I do have two matching flight cards in my hand. So these are wild as long as there's two of them. So I could play these two, discard them, and I can move myself forward again. Another thing I can do is I can also play these Loki cards. Now let me show you what they're all about. So these Lokis give you options for actions. What you can do is one or the other. So in this example, this Loki card will let you switch out two cards. So any two land cards, you can switch this one for this one, and you can move it around any way you want. As long as there's no raven on that card that you're moving, you're fine. Another thing you can do is you can also uh, move a raven either forward or you can move it backwards. So you might want to move yourself forward or you can move your opponent backwards, but you can only move one space. Another Loki card too is 
this one right here. So this one will actually let you draw two cards into your hand from any pile. So you could draw again from your flight cards or your Loki deck. Uh, this one right here means that you can draw up from the from the actual pile of the remaining land cards and you can go ahead and place it sideways anywhere. So what this is essentially is, essentially is going to do is going to make your opponent's uh, pathway a little bit longer. So instead of going across here, your opponent will now have to go around that area. Another card to another Loki card is this one. So you could rotate a land card 180 degrees. So you could rotate this one here like that to make it easier to travel through. Or you can get rid of a card completely and just take it out of the game. If I have a pathway that has more than one card of the same type, and if I were, for example, to play this one snow cap card, then I can move my raven further across it because it all matches. So instead of just moving one space, I can move a few spaces ahead. So keep that in mind when you're playing the game as well. So say for example, if you were to go ahead and use all of your flight cards from your hand. So if I were to play these two cards and I don't have any more to draw from, but I've discarded all of them, you can go ahead and pick up your discard and reshuffle them and then you have a new deck to pull from. However, with the Loki cards, once you use a Loki card, it will forever be out of the game. So then just make sure you're using your Loki cards wisely as well. Now, also after you've played your turn, you want to make sure once you've played as many cards as you have, so say if I were to play these three cards and I, I couldn't play this one or I didn't want to, you then can draw three cards back up from any pile, from either your flight cards or your Loki cards. So then you could draw back up once you're done with your turn and then it will become the other player's turn. Also on another note, make sure when you're drawing your cards back up, when you're drawing three cards after you're done with your turn, make sure you have still seven cards. If you have more than seven cards, you're gonna have to decide which one to get rid of. So then you would have to discard a card and make sure uh, you have seven cards at the end of your turn before the next player starts. So your next question might be, how do I win the game? So what you're doing in this game is you're trying to get your Raven across the landscape and you're trying to get him back to the starting point on the other end where your opponent started. So basically whoever ends up here at the very end of the game first is going to win no matter what. If there's a tie, then you just simply start a new game. All right, so now that I showed you how to play Odin's Ravens, let me go ahead and give you my final thoughts. So I'll go over some key elements of the gameplay, of the artwork, anything else, and just give you my personal thoughts. So uh, the first thing I'll go over is the artwork and the components of, of this box and this game itself. So the first thing I've noticed, of course, besides the, the beautiful artwork on the box, is the way that it opens up. I really like this idea. Uh, it's a really small box and it's a card a card game, so it's really easy to compact together and store. So this is a great idea how it can just easily be placed into the shelf. The other thing is that the insert itself works great with this box. Um, the only problem that I do have is the oddly shaped uh, cards. I can understand why simply because when you're laying 16 cards out in a row, it will take a lot of table space. So I can understand why they need to be so thin, but it, you can't really find any sleeves for this, for this particular card size. Um, it also doesn't allow it in this insert, but it's not a problem. It's simply a two player game. And even if you play it enough, uh, it doesn't cost you that much to buy another one if you do play it that much. So, um, so that was my only gripe regarding this uh, components, but the other stuff as far as the artwork and the box shape and the insert and the car quality and the components is great. The box itself says that this game should last between 20 and 30 minutes. Well, of course, when you're first learning the game, it will take that long, but 
After you and your opponent know this game, it should take about 10 to 15 minutes at most. So Odin's Ravens is also a high tactical game. By tactics, I mean something that is an action-reaction kind of gameplay. Now, the landscape is constantly changing, either by yourself or by your opponent. The cards that you're drawing is constantly changing. You don't know what you're going to have in hand. You don't know what the landscape is going to look like after your opponent plays their turn. So you have to react constantly to your, these changing elements. Um, so it's a very tactful game. It's not a difficult game though. So this is a great gateway game to introduce to someone that's just learning how to play tactical card games. Now, I do want to mention too that the this game does have a fair amount of replay value. Uh, just because of the shuffle of the cards, it's just a simple card game. But because of that, um, the so many there's so many cards in this game that the landscapes is always different. What you draw is always different, even though you both have the same set of opening cards. But because you're drawing either a combination of Loki or you're also drawing a combination of the um, of the regular flight cards, it always changes from game to game. But it's still simple enough and it's also very highly replayable, so this makes also another great filler game. This game also offers a high tension throughout the game, simply because it's a racing game. You're trying to get to from one point to the other point faster than your opponent does. So there's a constant building up of tension. You're getting better cards. You're you're kind of setting yourself up for a, a better progression along the line, or you're trying to just screw over your opponent. So when you're reaching the end point of the game, it's just the tension gets it builds up, and um, it makes it a very enjoyable game towards the end. So without those Loki cards, I just wanted to make note that the game itself would just be predetermined to the shuffle of the deck of those flight cards, and also what is arranged uh, for the land cards themselves. Those Loki cards provide the manipulation of the land cards and also of the draw of the flight cards too. So this game is just uh, highly based on those Loki cards. You should definitely use the Loki cards to manipulate the land and kind of hinder your opponent as much as you can or make yourself progress as much as you can. That's the only way you change the incrementation of, of what is going on along the flight and what is arranged there. So I just wanted to make note that it's not just predetermined because of the deck, but the Loki cards will actually create the manipulation, which is um, creates uh, high tactics too, and it makes it a little bit more interesting than just dealing with the draw. So in conclusion, I just wanted to um, give my final thought and just say that Odin's Raven makes a great, lighthearted, and easy to teach, easy to play filler. Uh, it's very beautiful to set up and display on the table. It's easy to teach and it's not language dependent so you can easily play this game with anyone uh, and it's it's something that you know if if the opponent doesn't know English or or if the opponent is is uh, doesn't read very well then this is a great game where you can just sit down with anyone and just play so um, I highly recommend Odin's Ravens it's a great filler game it's a game you're not going to necessarily play all night but it's a great game to play with someone else while you're waiting for a bigger game during your game night. So there you go, that's my thoughts for Odin's Ravens. Now if you like this video and want to see more of it and more reviews or vlogs or anything like that, just go ahead and subscribe. And if you also want to give me a like, you can do so too. You can follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, and also on MeeplesIncluded.com. So all the links will be down below. And if you uh, have any comments or any suggestions for future videos, just feel free to leave them down in the comments below as well. So thank you for watching, you guys, and I'll see you later. Bye!